Alrighty friends, so for our snowmen and birds, we're going to be using watercolor and salt to finish our drawings today. And so this is a really fun technique. It is something though that you will need to let dry overnight, okay? So what happens is we are going to put watercolor paint on our drawing and then we are going to sprinkle salt. And the salt is going to go, for me, on just the sky, but you may decide that you want it to be on his hat or his scarf. The idea is to just sort of pick like one thing that it's on. Like it might be, like I said, his hat and his scarf and his gloves. It might be the birds. It might be the stars. That would make sense. I'm going to put it on the sky. And so the salt is really cool. It's something that if you've been in camp before with me or something like that, you, you probably experienced this. So each tiny little grain of salt, which you can barely see here, I'm sure, um, basically acts like a little sponge. And so when the grain of salt lands on the paint, it sucks up some pigment from just where the salt is resting on the paper. And so when it dries overnight, when you brush the salt off when it's 100% dry the next morning, wherever the salt was, there's like a little tiny star-shaped white spot on your paper. And so I just love doing that with skies, especially starry skies, because you know, it looks like the some of the stars are bigger and then the little tiny crystallized um, white marks on the paper are going to look like stars that are far away. It almost kind of creates like a Milky Way effect. So it's really fun, it looks great, and I'm definitely gonna show you how all that works today. For when you do a watercolor painting and you're not using anything else, for example, we're not using crayons, we're not using pencils, you definitely wanna have three types of brushes. And so if possible, try to get yourself a small, a medium, and a large paintbrush. That is gonna help you a lot. There's just some things, you know, that need a small paintbrush and some things need a big paintbrush and that's okay. And some things need a medium one too. So when it comes to the salt, uh, this is just my regular salt that uh, I have for my home, um, but you can buy kosher salt or different types of salt and just salt out of any salt shaker will do. So it doesn't really matter. If you have kosher salt though, because the crystals are larger, it leaves like a larger star shaped white spot on your paper. So it's kind of fun if you have both types to experiment with both. You're gonna need water, and you're gonna need, of course, paper towels and of course, watercolor paint. Now guys, you guys have been doing great with this. Please like us, love us, leave a comment, share with your friends, subscribe, uh, retweet, whatever. Whatever it is you can do, it is making a big difference. People are learning about Arts Hub and because of you, Arts Hub is gonna survive. So it is so wonderful and I appreciate it so much. I bought these magnets hoping I would have someone to mail them to, and I have. So if you want one too, please help us on social media, and I will be very glad to send you a personal note and a magnet in the mail. All right, guys. It is now time to get started with our snowman and birds with watercolor paint and salt. So, first of all, we don't need the salt until the end, so I'm just going to set it aside. It's always wise to have a paper towel handy, and I'm going to start with my small brush. And that's because I'm gonna do some of the small things first. I'm gonna start with the nose of my snowman. And so I've just dipped my brush in the water and I'm gonna put a layer of paint on there. Now, one thing I think is really smart to think about is how you can layer the paint. So you see, I've just gone back and forth a few times just to kind of get that orange a little bit brighter. and. I'm going to let it now sink into the paper. So I'm going to rinse my brush out in between. It's really important. What are some other small things you guys can see? Well, I've got, for example, the buttons and the birds and the gloves. So I'm going to do some of the small things first. And by doing those first, then they're going to dry faster and they're not going to smudge as quickly or as easily. And so I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to move on to my little birds here. I think that these birds are supposed to be like um, robins. So I thought that was kind of fun when I was inspired. It was actually a Christmas card that I got many, many years ago. And I was inspired by that. And so I have made an art lesson based on that. And it's just a really fun way to kind of honor the memory of a happy Christmas card or something that someone maybe sent you or something you saw 
like in a magazine, it's really fun to make up your own art lessons. If you ever just see something you're looking at like that you want to turn into art, it's a great way to make something last forever. All right, in a special way. So I'm just going to do a tiny bit more here just to show you what I mean. I'm going to do these bird beaks a little bit later because I don't want the, the colors to mix. Like I said, wherever you're painting, you're kind of just letting it sink in. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give my snowman some blue buttons. And I think I'm going to put some blue on his hat as well. So these are things you can do however you want to, whatever color you want. But notice how I'm doing it slowly and carefully, and I'm just using my small brush here, guys. And I'm just going to take my time, I'm not going to rush. And watercolor paint, by the way, is just fabulous for mixing colors. So look, I'm taking a little bit of purple now, and I'm just putting that purple right into my paint here without doing too many brush strokes. And what that does is it's just going to kind of mix and blend together and look awesome. So. I'm going to do this in time lapse and of course I'll come back and we'll talk some more before I'm done for the day but I definitely want to show you how to do that salt so anyway here we go guys. As you can see, I did some painting and I just wanted you to, you know, observe that I, I on purpose mixed a little bit of blue in because yellow and blue make green and I've got some blues and purples and just things like that that are kind of fun. And, and sometimes, you know, like my blue button kind of leaked into my scarf a little bit, but that's all right. It all looks good. As you can see, it's really cute anyway. So the paper towels are super helpful. Um, and what I want you to know is you should do blotting. So when you do blotting, you just kind of go straight up and straight down. You don't ever rub, okay? You're not, you don't want to smudge it really badly. But just kind of go like this. You can fold it over and over again. I know sometimes they turn out really pretty. But that way, you're not going to smear it. So now I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to move into my large paintbrush. I'm going to put these away. And I think you also probably noticed I did some color blending. So blue and green and a little bit of black made this nice dark sort of evergreen color I used on the shading of my trees. And also when I worked on um, the orange and the yellow, also the brown, I made a lighter shade of brown here. So you can do a lot of color blending and that's what this is for. This is a mixing tray. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. And because I have so much yellow and blue, I want to, um, mostly yellow and orange I should say, I want to go with like a purple sky. And so what I'm going to show you here is I'm just going to basically start getting water right here. And that's important. You see how it's kind of filling up a little bit? It's filling up just a little bit. And that's going to soak up in the little paint tray there. And so now I'm just going to hold this down carefully because I've blotted all the liquid off my paper, this should not blend with the paint that's already there. Now sometimes that happens anyway, and, and it's okay, because it's watercolor paint. It's supposed to kind of blend a little bit. But what I wanted to show you was how fun this is. And so I'm going to do this just a little bit more, and then I'm going to show you how to use the salt, and then I'll do some more time lapse, because I know sometimes it just takes a long time but notice how I'm just kind of going around, going around like that uh, and just taking my time. But this, what's important about the salt is that you do like a section and you have lots of paint. Okay, so you see how I'm adding more water to my purple paint in the tray. But I'm not going to paint the entire background. I'm going to do basically right up to here. And I think you guys can probably see that this is really, really wet, right? So now it's time for the salt. So I'm going to sprinkle my salt only on the wet paint, right? And I am not going to add any more paint now. That is so important. 
No more paint goes where the salt has landed, okay? So I'm gonna brush the salt off the dry paper and I'm gonna continue with my paintbrush. I'll do this in time-lapse and then we'll come back one more time at the end and the big reveal will be at the end of the video because I have to let it dry overnight. guys that was so much fun and I have to let this dry overnight so so do you once your snowman the sky is completely painted and you are ready to put the salt on and you let it dry overnight remember it just has to sit there in the open air all of it's got to dry and you don't want to rub it you don't want to touch it you can see how cute it looks already Another thing I wanted to point out to you is sometimes there's what's called the happy accident. And I accidentally, when I was getting purple, bumped into my blue paint and suddenly I had a different shade of purple. And so then I had a little bit more blue paint and it started to turn blue. And I like the way it turned out. Sometimes that happens, it, it's perfectly fine. And I, you know, even felt eventually like I had too much blue. So I just wanted you to know, for example, there's a lot of green in my blue right there. So you can just take your paper towel at the end and see how I just went like that into the paint. It just kind of cleans your paint for you. And uh, that way, when it dries, it dries nice and clean. So this is just a technique that will help you keep your paint relatively clean so the colors are, you know, not all blended together. And so you can also let your paint dry open like this overnight as well. Um, so guys, once this is dry, I'm gonna come back at the very end and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, so we are now going to scrape the salt off and see what happens. So as you can see, my salt is on here and it's totally dry. So you can either rub it with your finger and sometimes it's really, really on there and you have to rub really hard. And sometimes it's easier than others. But I wanted to show you, you can do that, and if, if that bothers you, you can also get some type of plastic card and use it as a scraper. And when you do that, it just makes it a little bit easier to scrape it off. And so if you like that idea, definitely get yourself some type of a library card or something like that, and you can scrape this salt off. Wow, so this is showing you all these cool patterns underneath. And just pushing all that salt off. Super. So guys, you can see that anywhere the salt was, it kind of rested on the paper and sort of absorbed some of the paint. And it just makes really cool patterns and designs. And it's just really pretty. So this is something I really hope you will try because it's just so cool and you can do this on all kinds of different projects. You don't have to just do this for the snowman. In the future, if we're ever doing a project and you want to use watercolor paint for your sky and put salt on it, you can do that at any time. And uh, it works really well for big things. Um, particularly this sky is a good one. Uh, but it doesn't have to be the sky. It could just be a cool background. So it's just something to think about. I really enjoyed this, guys. I hope you did too. I'll see you next time. <laughs>